Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Hi, I'm Pastor Anita Jawa. I am here today with ECEO and Ms. Jamaica on Boss Talk 101. You all are welcome to see us. Miss Anita Jawa. She's in the building, man. Holla at you. Hey, What's man. going on? Hey, man. I'm good. How uh, are you? As a child, what did you want to be growing up? I don't really, I can't remember exactly what I want to be. I just know that I w didn't want to be what I saw around me. And what I mean by that, I didn't want to uh, be less than. I didn't want to be talked about. I didn't want to be mistreated. Um, and I that didn't was wanna, your environment. Yes. I didn't want to feel um, threatened or violated. Um, uh, cause I saw that a lot. Um, and it's crazy because I can remember when I was four all the way up, like some things in my life. And I never forget that we stayed across the street from a cafe. Cause you know, we was in East Texas. You Already know? got a cafe <laughs> over there. Could you go in it? Cause some of them down yes. there, we couldn't go in. <laughs> yeah. No, we, I wasn't supposed to be in the cafe oh, okay. because I was a child. Yeah. Yeah. How do you deal I'm, with, yeah. um, him being gone? Yeah. Because there's so many people who are watching who. Maybe going lost, through the same experience. Have lost a loved one or is a losing husband. a loved one, mm -hmm. a husband, um, a child, and can't deal with it. That's I would a good say question. that um, my faith has been activated now more than ever. Mm -hmm. And as you said earlier, uh, E, is that God prepared us. So even before he transitioned, God was preparing both of us. And, and I thank God for that, that he just didn't leave us uh, unknowingly. Uh, we didn't know the exact time. We didn't know the exact date. Uh, don't get me wrong with that. Uh, but along the way, God was showing us. Mm -hmm. And God was, um, even because we do a, 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 a daily prayer at 6 a.m., a corporate daily prayer. And uh, God was showing us even with that, like when the pandemic first hit, he said that it was going to be hard, but that he, was gonna, he, that he was going to give us the grace to get through it. And I didn't quite understand it. You know, when he gave it to me one uh, early one morning, I'm like, I don't understand this, God. But he said, the more and more he kept talking to me, he said, I need for you to come closer to me. I need for you to find out more time. And, and this is going to be an unusual uh, time, not only for you, but for the world. And, um, and so God just kept showing us and just kept talking to both of us. And, and, and during that time, Bishop said, okay, I'm going to start doing Heal America even the more. I'm going to go every month somewhere else. And I was like, no, you can do it at home. You can do it in the studio. He said, I can't. I can't. He kept saying, I, I, I can't. I'm going to run out of time. I just, I can't. And I didn't understand what he was talking about the time. I thought he meant, hey, I'm going to run out of time, momentum. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to get too old for it. I didn't understand that he was talking about God's timing for his life. Yeah. And I don't even know if he understood Correct. all of that. Uh, but he kept saying, I got to go. I got to go. And every city we went, as a matter of fact, um, the, the Hill America that was in Dallas was last year on June 24th, 2020. That's our wedding date. Wow. Wow. And so when he said, he said, I got to do it and I got to do it this date. I said, we're not going to celebrate. He said, we're going to celebrate afterwards. That's but right. we're going to do the Hill America. That's right. That's right. We're going to do the Hill America. And I was like, okay, well, you want to do it? And I was like, and God said, shut up. Listen, just shut up. And so it was during those times where, where I wanted to say something. I wanted, I wanted the Anita to come out. And God said, no, because I got him. I got him. And God kept saying, I got him. And I didn't know what that meant. But he was just going from city to city to city. And so uh, October came up. And I never will forget, October came up. And this is when we both contracted COVID. Mm -hmm. And um, October 12th was the first day that he ended up from an, uh, from an urgent care to an emergency room. Wow. And that was the last day. That was the first and the last. He ended up in the hospital and did not come out of the hospital till March 11th when he transitioned. Wow. But uh, the October 12th was when he flew out of town. He was in another city in a whole other state. Mm -hmm. And so we were apart two weeks. Uh, he's, he's, <sighs> he's fighting for his life, and he didn't realize how much I was fighting for my life. Mm. Uh, because, of course, I didn't want to call him because he, I felt like he was in a worse condition. And he had uh, um, different, you know, things that were already going on in his body. Mm -hmm. um, and so I stayed at home and I stayed away from my children, uh, which our baby girl did get it, but she didn't have any, any symptoms. And so we walked through that, got through that. And so um, I wasn't even cleared by the doctor before I boarded the plane. The doctor said, wow. do not get on the plane because we don't know. And, um, and I said, well, I got to go see about my husband. And so the moment that I got there, one thing led to the other, and I was able to go in. Um, they had cleared him because he, he was already in the medical-induced state at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I was the first person to see him, to lay hands on him, to touch him, to kiss him, and all of that. And then we stayed there from that time all the way up to December 23rd. Wow. 
we finally got the green light for him to travel back to Dallas, which was Care Flight, which was really, uh, we prayed through that. We had prayer warriors all around the country praying because that wasn't, uh, the doctors wanted to do it, but they didn't want to do it because his condition wasn't all the way better, but it wasn't worse, but mm -hmm. it wasn't all the way, and the air could have did anything to his lungs. It was a lot of things going on. But we managed to do that. We came back. My daughters wanted to be back here for Christmas. Because mind you, every, when I moved, they moved. So they're in school, but they're doing virtual online. One is in high school, one is in college. So everybody world shifted. No one was doing the same thing. His parents was there, his sisters, um, our, our, our older son was there. I love uh, the support. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of support <clears throat> there. And so we're staying in the hotel. We're not staying in the house, we're not staying with people. We're all in a hotel room. I know. And so we're eating hotel food. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to Walmart to buy some clothes or mm -hmm. we're trying to find a mall to get some more clothes because we're thinking week by week, we don't know mm -hmm. when if we're gonna come back home mm -hmm. or something else is gonna happen. But we're yet holding on to our faith. And, um, and so people from around the country, like I said, were calling, taking up fast, uh, doing all kinds of things. And um, so December 23rd, we landed here back in Dallas. Um, and so we were here up until March 11th. And we had so much favor at the particular hospital. Um, they were not letting everyone in, but they not only let, allowed us in, they allowed us to have access to my husband 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Wow. So awesome. that meant that I could spend the night with my husband. Wow. He could sleep in his bed and I could sleep on the cot or whatever. I had stayed so long to where I went out and I asked my assistant to buy me a cot. So brought the cot in and I could stay there at night with him just to make sure he was good. That's what you um, and, um, and he felt that connection as well. Right. And, I, and I thank God for that. Um, and so he did go on, but the day before he went on, we were on our prayer call and uh, God gave me this as if he was standing right before me. And, and it's the scripture says that, um, what can separate you? What can separate you from me? And um, is it death? Is it life? Is it this? Is Romans it, you know? chapter eight. Yes. So he gives me that and I'm, and I'm thinking it's for somebody else. I didn't know less than 24 hours, it was actually for me. Yeah, yeah. And so with that being said, of course I was devastated. Of course my heart was broken. Of course I felt like I couldn't breathe. I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't move because my heart was ripped out of me. Mm -hmm. My very soulmate, the one that I promised to be with for the rest of my life. And I would always tell him, I love you beyond my last breath. Wow. And um, this is not just a temporary love, but this is a forever love that I have for you. You said the fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. That's what you was saying. You know, yes. And, you know people were praying for you. And I like what you said about Romans chapter eight, how who can separate us from the love of God? No depth, no height, no principality, no things in the past, nothing to come, you know. Right. Nothing can separate you, nothing. you know. And <clears throat> this is this is something that we have to hold on to. You know, that is that that that's the most important thing. But you know, you know, this is this is where, you know, when we really look at things and what God has laid out before us, you know. Like I said, I value the times that that I have with a person, you know, so much because right. we don't know. You know, sometimes I go the extra mile and doing extra things because people do pass on. You know what I mean? Right. It don't matter who you are. You know what I mean? When it's That's time, true. it's time. You and and all you can do is love. love. That's it. Love. That's all you can do is love. You know, love. that's the most important thing. Is but love. I use I use death as. Um, if you're still here, you use it as an example of what you need to be doing in your life. Meaning, when I lost my dad, I can hold on to memories of us going hunting, fishing, I'm um, doing certain things. And this life makes you, or America, or you would say, um, makes you want to work all the time to create a future for your kids. Mm -hmm. Money, money, money. You know what I mean? And not really spend as much time with them. Oh, you, you want to do basketball? Okay, I'll get somebody to take you over here. I'll drop you here, but I'm going to go here because I got to still go to work. I got to do two jobs. I got to do this to, to provide a good future for you. But at the end of the day, when you go, you leave all this money, but they can spend off, leave it. You don't leave all that values with them. You don't leave all the memories. And I, and I tell everybody, I said, as much as, yes, your memories can go because of Alzheimer's, God is still not a wicked God where all, people who have Alzheimer's still remember when they were young. Mm -hmm. So all their memories are gone. They still remember those foundation years. 
You know what I mean? So if you can spend that time and really, like I tell our kids all the time, I said, tomorrow's not promise. You can go, I can go. I'm not only helping them, but I'm helping myself because death has no age. So by talking about this to the ones you love, you're preparing yourself that if they might go, and no matter how much you prepare yourself, you still can never prepare yourself for that time, but it does help speaking about it and telling people what um, what your, your wishes are. Like, if I go tomorrow, I would like for you to, you know, move on with your life, don't sulk, move on, you know, because life is here. There's a reason you're still here and I'm not. So remember all the times that we've had together and use that to move on, raise the kids, you know, things like that. Don't forget those times, but you have to move on because whoever, we would never want a person to sit down and not, because if you had went before him, you wouldn't want him to sit down and not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So people need to always still look at things like that. If it had went the other way around, what would you want for that person? Oh, yeah. So all I'm saying is, man, um, yeah, yeah. We we didn't just meet for no reason, right? No, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so there's always a reason. So we just got to make sure we utilize resources. Amen. Yeah, just let me know. I mean, y'all want to pray? Anything you want to pray? Y'all want to pray? Go ahead. I'll pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this moment. Even thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Lord, we ask and we lift up these great uh, business leaders, Father God. We pray for E and Stephanie, Lord. We pray for the vision that you've already blessed them and given them, God. Lord, we pray for the overflow, the abundance, for the latter day rain, Father God, for the refreshing and the renewing in this place upon their lives, upon their children's lives. Lord, we just ask that you bless this podcast, allow it to reach and to go further than they could ever imagine, Lord. Allow this to trigger someone's heart, Father God. Allow it to penetrate someone's thoughts, Lord. Allow it to be mind-blowing, life-changing, Oh God, allow it to be the fresh wind of, of them on this trip, in this journey, Lord. Allow them to know, oh God, if we can make it, as Bishop Omar would say, if we can make it, they too can make it, Lord. You have no respect of persons. You will reign on the just as well as the unjust, Father. We thank you and we praise you right now for what has happened, what will happen, oh God, and what has already happened, Lord. We thank you right now, oh God, for the ministries that are being birthed, even through this podcast podcast, God. We thank you for every individual, every business that is connected, Lord. Thank you for indirect and direct, Lord. Thank you for the flow, even the abundance. You said there was no lack in your kingdom, God, and we stand on your word. There's no lack, oh God, in this business, in this area, Father God, that we are producers after our own kind, oh God, and we thank you right now that it is so, oh God, that it is so. In the mighty name of Jesus, we name dare Jesus. to believe Amen and amen. 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 Hi, I'm Pastor Anita Chawa. I am on Boss Talk 101. Today, I'm asking you to check us out later on. Thank you for joining us. God bless. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101.